So you wanna have a sandwich and you spend 10, 15, 18 dollars? But there's a bodega sandwich that's much cheaper and when making it at home, you can have it for this right here. That is but cheaper. Oh, 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 this is the season, the holiday season. Oh, <laughs> what, what do you want for Christmas, little boy? Santa, I want a PS5 and I want the new Halo. Well, we, uh, those are, those are, you know, there's supply chain issues. Those are out of stock. So, uh, but I do have something for you. We have the Josh Weissman, an unapologetic cookbook and eight times New York Times bestseller cookbook. And it's 40% off on Amazon and the link is in the description. What does that even mean? It's a, it's a great you book. It sucks, Santa. It's a good book. It's uh, I heard that he worked really hard on it. <laughs> so we're not just making any ordinary sandwich. We're making a chopped cheese. I know this is a place that's very sensitive to a lot of people. I wanna pay respect to that. I really do, honestly. So with it being something that's heavily scrutinized by New York, I have someone directly, a good friend from New York. Bing bong, you already know what it is. It's Willie. We're here today and we're gonna be making a chopped cheese the New York way and the Weissman way. So put your Tim's on and let's go to Grand Flavor Central Station, Flavor Town, baby. We're gonna make two different ones. We're making my version and your version, which I don't know what it's gonna be at all. We're just gonna play it out and see how it goes. Taste test them together. We'll have our final prices and it'll be a beautiful time. So a chopped cheese can go on many breads, but the most common that you're gonna see it on is a hero roll. Obviously we're making our own, right? So start with 302 grams of water at around 90 Fahrenheit, whisk in eight grams of instant yeast until dissolved, follow that with 33 grams of granulated sugar, whisk that until dissolved, then pop that into your stand mixer with the dough spiral thing attachment on. Then in a separate bowl, mix together 600 grams of bread flour with 14 grams of fine sea salt. Give that a nice little escape business for the bread flour. I know you might be thinking, oh my God, Josh, you're using grams? Well, what if you can't get a scale? It's just butt cheaper. Well, don't you worry because we'll have the conversions in the description, which will also be on my website. And yes, we have a website. It's uh, joshweissman.com. It's pretty great. And if you've never been on it, you should probably go there. Now, next, start your stand mixer. And yes, this can be done by hand. Add your flour, a heaping spoonful at a time until all that has been added. Let that mix for about five minutes until your dough begins to turn smooth. Then add a quarter cup or 56 grams of unsalted softened butter. Let that mix for another two minutes or until incorporated and smooth. Now, if you do this by hand, I would actually suggest that you replace the butter with vegetable oil and just add it directly to the flour, then the water. You'll figure it out. Once your dough is nice and smooth, shape it into a bowl, place it in a greased bowl, cover with plastic wrap. Oh, wow, what a very nice name. And let it rise for one hour at room temp or until doubled and From there, degas your dough by punching every last bit of love out of it. Then divide into eight evenly sized balls. Cover your balls with a damp towel and rest for 10 minutes. Then roll those bad boys out into a rectangle that's roughly 7 by 4 inches. Then starting from the long side, roll it tightly into a log. Seal the seam, then roll it all the way out to the ends to taper. Trying not to get it too long, alright? We're not making baguettes here. Pop that onto a baking sheet lightly dusted with cornmeal and repeat with all your little hero roll men. Now, once those bad boys are shaped, cover that with another baking sheet inverted, wrap it with plastic wrap to prevent any sort of draft, and let that proof at room temp for 30 minutes. Ding ding, reminder time, now would be a great time to preheat your oven at 375 Fahrenheit. Now, once you're ready, whisk together one egg white in 120 milliliters of water until thoroughly combined. You can totally brush this on your bread and it's gonna be great, but if you wanna look like a total genius and you happen to have a spray bottle, then pop it in there and spray your dough to coat evenly and lightly with egg wash. Then using a sharp razor, score your dough at a 35 degree angle, about a quarter of an inch deep into the dough. Then pop it in the oven and bake for 15 to 20 minutes. Remove and totally optionally brush with melted butter, then cool on a wire rack until completely cool. Now look, these these aren't supposed to look crazy artisanal like we usually do around here. Let's keep them humble. Now we're pretty much ready to cook, but first let's make a quick little mayo hot sauce. Into a small bowl, get one cup or 240 grams of mayo, hit that with about three tablespoons or 38 grams of a hot sauce of your choice. I'm using crystal, but you know, you can use whatever you like. And you know what, screw it. A little bit of Worcestershire sauce, about one tablespoon or 14 grams of it. Give that a whisk, season to taste with salt as needed, and that's it. Okay, flat top time. First thing, split a hero roll, leaving one side attached and toast it lightly on a flat top, then increase that heat to medium high, 
add a little oil, then add a small handful of sliced onions. This is just a julienne sweet onion in half of a thinly sliced serrano chili. Mind you, this is enough for one sandwich. So if you're doing a bunch, then obviously scale up as needed. Season to taste with salt, then saute that until softened and lightly charred about two to three minutes. Push that to the side. Now grab a decent handful of ground beef and listen up. This is important. Get the highest fat percentage ground beef you can find, okay? I don't want any of that 90% bullshit on here. Plop it directly on your flat top, which should be screaming hot at this point. Spread the meat out so you get a good sear. Let it cook for about two to three minutes, then flip and season immediately with salt and any other seasonings you might want. You could add Cajun seasoning that might be sacrilege, so we'll pretend that I didn't do that. Start chopping it using your spatula and get it as finely as you can. Then just let that cook, stirring it occasionally. You know, you really want to get those beefy, crispy yum yum bits. Now toss the meat with the vegetables back together, line it up roughly into the shape of your bread. Optionally, add a little bit of finely chopped raw garlic. Fold it together until just hot. Layer on two slices of American, yes, American cheese. There is no debate here. And if you want to piss someone off, you can add a slice of Swiss cheese as well. And now, okay, hear me out. In this moment of time, there was a heavy debate here. It was stressful. Do I let the cheese melt on top and just pop it on the roll? Or do I chop it up and fold the cheese together to create a cheesy, beefy amalgamation? You know, and it is called a chopped cheese, so, you know, I chopped the cheese and folded it together, all right? And guess what? I regretted it immediately. But you know what? We have yet to taste it, so let's just finish it up by waiting for that cheese to get nice and melty and hot, getting a toast bun, hitting it with our hot sauce mayo, a generous drizzle of ketchup, pepper your buns, plop that meaty cheesy beast onto your bread, stack on some thinly sliced thick tomato, which has been salted and peppered and left to sit for about 10 minutes. And finally, some very thinly sliced fresh iceberg lettuce. Then immediately tightly wrap it up in a sandwich paper to serve to a hungry individual that deserves love because we all deserve love. Now, it's time to taste test this alongside with our New York rep, see what he has to say about it and uh, pray, I suppose. Oh! -ho! I'll be honest, the chopped cheese is not about looking beautiful, it's about feeling beautiful. It's about tasting something that makes you both emotionally and physically feel beautiful. I feel like we've paid somewhat homage to how a chopped cheese should be made, although I made a couple of modifications which may or may not anger some people. I have somebody in the building who probably has something to say about it, and he can say his piece in a second. We got the bodega wrap. The beauty of wrapping a sandwich like this isn't just to wrap it and keep it warm. It's that it conforms like a makimono roll. You take this up and wait a minute, that once messy little sandwich is now a beautifully conformed sandwich. Ingenuity. Perfectly seasoned. It's got a little bit of spice from the Serranos, from the Cajun spice, but it's not overbearing. It's not taking over the flavor of what a chopped cheese should be. The tomato, the lettuce, it all plays in beautifully. To me, it tastes like an ordinary chopped cheese, but like a little bit more, a little more elevated. But all for this price right here with homemade bread, pretty god dang good if you ask me. If you don't live in New York, you could be the bodega. I need my guest, Sir William, to enter the frame. Let's see what we got here. I will definitely agree with you about the elevation tactics and making it at home is definitely the shit. Like, the coolest part about a chopped cheese, it's an anytime, any day sandwich. Breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Be honest with me. Don't skip me on the rules, all right? Be honest with me. You got the basics, but you know, I noticed a couple of things in your process that were different than things I notice are a repeating pattern in the bodega process. More lettuce, less lettuce. I think more. More lettuce. Yeah. Overall, I mean, it's a badass chopped cheese for someone who is not from New York and doesn't eat these when they're drunk or hung over on the train. But that's what they're all about. Exactly. Show us your version and, uh, and, and, and show me the ways of a chopped cheese, please. Let's get it. First things first, what I always notice at the bodega is they throw the meat down first. I am gonna use less meat than Josh. I saw his tactic and it was interesting and cool. But yeah, normally they'll throw about, I'd say like that much, maybe a little bit more like that. And then they hit it with decent amount of salt, a little bit more, decent amount of pepper. This spatula and this plancha chopping thingy is the normal tactics that I see. And I also noticed that Josh had put the veggies down first. The bodega way, they like get the meat nice and crispy almost. And then they add the veggies at the end to kind of rehydrate it. Maybe it's some secret bodega tactic. It's very important to be as loud and obnoxious as possible when you're chopping. I noticed the meat almost not, not getting burnt, but you want it to get those crispy morsels, you know? So this sandwich means a lot to me. I've been really broke and down and out in New York and it's saved me a lot of money just being able to go to a bodega and spend three bucks to eight bucks. Josh makes like my favorite bread ever. Yeah, we can get it even more crispy, honestly. And then you chop your veg into it after the meat cooks. Traditionally, you would never do this with meat, but I always notice that this is the way that they do it. But it's kind of cool because you get a little bit more of like a crunch from the onion 
onions and the peppers. Now Josh literally chopped the cheese. For the record, ugh, there's beef fat on the ground, which is what you want. I literally saw five videos back to back in a bodega where they chopped the damn cheese and folded it together. I'm walking away, I'm walking away. Uh, there, there are certain places that do it differently. This is just the way that I've normally seen. We'll let that get a little toasty roasty. Normally they don't use two cheeses, but I honestly like was inspired by Josh. Go like that, boom. Some shreddis, a couple slices of tomato. Yeah, it's looking beautiful. Oh God. All right, we'll go upstairs and wrap this up. All right, so here we go. I definitely agree with Josh about the Makimono comment that he made. And me and Josh actually both used to work in the same sushi restaurant. Um, Bodega Makimono. It's true, it like brings the sandwich together, <laughs> kind of like forms it. Boom, there we go. There's a lot of things I'm regretting right now. The first thing is I argued against cutting on a bias because of the type of sandwich it was. But structurally, I mean, I really liked the way you did it. I wish that I had put the cheese on top and didn't fold it in. I felt like the cheese was lost when I folded it. As opposed to now, it's like I can see the f***ing cheese. Mm -hmm. Should we eat it? Yeah. Hang Chopped on. cheers. <laughs> Chopped cheers between two friends. Close friends. Oh, no. <laughs> Mm-hmm, very good. It tastes exactly like the bodega one that I had. Like, exactly. Wow, I'm flattered. All the memories that I had of that bodega chopped cheese I had like four or five years ago, it's all coming back now. It's kind of an ethereal thought process. It's hard to describe, really. But it's not just putting goddamn things together, putting ketchup, it's not just about the ingredients. It's something about the process, and that just goes to show how important technique is. Enough is enough. Anybody in anything can be technique. It's about tradition and culture, not just put doing yeah, brother. I've actually never made a chopped cheese myself. I've just seen it, I've, except for right now. I've seen it get made over and over again, and I knew in my head if I just copied the way that they did it, that it would be badass. I impressed myself. Thank you, you big hunk of man. <laughs> you wanna know what else is a big, thick spatula? Chopping up chunky piles of meat? B-roll. Okay, so what did we learn? Well, today we learned that there's an incredible sandwich out there for the most unbelievable price of this right here. But I think the more important lesson, not everything is about money. Some things are more about technique. They're about culture. They're about how they make you feel. The way you assemble it, the way you put things together significantly affects the final product of anything. Absolutely. Like I said, never made one before, but I knew it was gonna be good because I've seen it done a million times and it's been good every single time. So I hope that we paid tribute to this incredible sandwich from an incredible city. You know, maybe you saved yourself some money, but maybe you freaking learned yourself something for once. With all that being said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you. Bing bong.